Because the thing was, like, Arwen's all hostile. It was like you were hanging out in someone at, at your mate's house. That's what I loved about it so much. And I, get that, I still get that vibe here when you see everyone just chilling out on the, on the couches and stuff. Arwen treats this place like it's his, like, literally his, his home, and you're just hanging out. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about some of the hostels. Like, you immediately feel it if you're going to fit in or not. Like do you, do, how did you find out about this place, Maxi? Did, you, did your group, like, just do a random search? Like, I want to yeah, know how people got the, here. I mean, Morgan booked it, but we, we used the Hostel World app, I think. Yeah, right. Hostel World. Yeah, and we, just, we were literally just going for cheapest. <laughs> it's a bit of a budget. Cheapest. So is our one known yeah. for being a bit of a cheap, cheap... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I also think one of the other reasons is that it's the weekend, so we're recording this on a Saturday, mm. and usually the Friday and Saturdays, everything is sold out, so uh, like even the cheap ones go up. Uh, yeah, safe for this place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and has anyone actually been here over winter? Because I, yeah. I, I can't imagine what it's like over winter. And the pictures that are on the wall over there that we keep telling yeah. Alwyn to do something with... They, they 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 demonstrate a fucking frozen Danube. No, Danube is that how you pronounce it? Danube, yeah. 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 Is that is that regular? No, actually, in winter you can have like fifteen degrees and warm sunshine, or it can be minus fifteen and ice because we're right like in between North and Southern Europe, so it depends on where the wind comes from. If the wind's from Italy, it's the same as in Italy here in winter. If the wind's from Russia, I mean, brace yourself. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. shit. When when people come to Budapest, what are they? What's the what's the image? Because I I ended up here by almost by accident the first time I came here. I got chased out of fucking Belgrade by this lunatic hostel owner who thought I was drinking and smoking all of his his uh, products, which probably was. Oh, he's been a bad boy again. <laughs> yeah, he, he literally cracked the shits with me. He, he had these he had this ink on his in his knuckles, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and brass knuckles. Oh, he said to me, he goes, do you know what these mean? I got these in prison, you know that? Because I murdered someone, you know that? So you better fucking watch yourself with your fucking hands in my secret. And the no, chick- actually, in, in Serbia, each ring around your finger, around the first digit of your finger, actually means you got raped in prison. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, the, he, he was someone's bitch. Oh, I don't know why I was so fucking scared of him back then. But he was a pretty hard case. But you were working for him? Or, or no, I was just staying at this hostel. And the thing is, when I say hostel, it was his apartment block that he'd, like, he had two bedrooms, which he stuffed as many beds in there as he could. And he would sleep out on the couch. And, every, and he, would just, he was just a drunkard. And, the, and this poor woman from, um, um, I keep saying Montevideo, but that's in Uruguay. Um, what's the other Monte place that's in Yugoslav, ex-Yugoslavia? Oh, Montenegro. M- Montenegro, I think she was from. And she was basically like his, his fucking slave. She did everything. And she said, come on, we've got to get you out of here. This is kind of getting a bit out of hand. And she directed me to this fucking highway and said, jump on a truck. And I was like, I've never hitchhiked before. This is a bit extreme. I'm fucking, this, I feel like I'm being extradited here. And she says, that's exactly, what's, that's exactly what's happening here. So I caught a couple of trucks to Budapest and I, was, I didn't know what to expect from Budapest. When I hear Budapest, now we hear the connotation of uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. And that's got nothing to do with Budapest, does it? No, no, no it it's just the name. It was filmed in Görlitz near Berlin, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, what? What did you guys make of that film, by the way? It's strange, but it's really good to watch. So. Do you good like sense of humour? Yeah, it's the, that's the Wes for you. That's Wes Anderson, the filmmaker. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. a real quirky sense of humour. I especially like that painting, Boy with Apple. I can't. That was hilarious. I can't. And then it got it, replaced actually by a picture by Egon Schiele showing a woman fingering herself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, what what do you when when you come to Budapest? What do you expect? If if it's your first time here, Max and and Jonesy. Uh, your I second. I came back in June with a big group of people and we stayed like right in the centre. And yeah. I mean, I, but what did I, you expect? I expected like just... Get closer to the mic, good, brother. Good vibes and lots of like good nights out really and like a lot of, a lot of culture, a lot of like nice people and cheap. That's what you were expecting. Cheap. Yeah, cheap. that's what I was expecting, yeah. Cheap is the word here. Cheap is the yeah. <laughs> yeah. I reckon though that it's changed a lot in the last couple of years because you guys have been here five years ago so... Yeah, well. it gentrified enormously. Really, like the price Did it? Up yeah. So much. Really? Wait, but I still, it, it is recently. cheap. I mean, it's really yeah, cheap worry, still. I went here for the first time in 2007. Um, 
Wow. And I didn't have any expectations at all, other than that I knew that Hungarian was a totally impenetrable language, unintelligible, <laughs> literally. And Don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have any expectations at all, and I found just basically this city back then was a big ruin. Yeah. I mean, it was really run down, really tatty. Um, Bucharest-ish? Worse, Albania. actually. Worse than Bucharest? Albania? No, no, worse than Bucharest. Yeah, but, you know, Bucharest actually is a city with a certain class and style to it, even though it went through 40 years of diehard communism and everything. Mm. Uh, Budapest, I found just a city, when I got here for the first time, people in track suits, you know, lots of alcoholics, and <laughs> no, I wasn't too taken by it at all. Mm. And then it changed over the years, did it? Well, I changed, I suppose. Yeah. How so, old were you when you first got here? 21. How old are you now, man? 33. Are you only 33? Yeah, what were you thinking? <sighs> I thought you were my age. How old are you Fuck, then? you're a baby. 40. 40 nearly. Really? Yeah, 38. 38 and a half. Oh, right. I've got two more years of 30s to go. But let's go well, back 40 to Well, 40s, new 30, so no need to worry. Oh, about they that. keep saying that. Then, then 50s will be the new fucking 20s, and 60, <laughs> eventually 70s will be the new fucking... And then by the time new yeah, ends up being new, you're, you're dead. You're a baby again. You're incontinent, and you need to wear diapers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically Saturday night for him. But that's a different story. You studied here. Yeah, I actually lived here for a year. You lived here? Yeah, for a whole year. And uh, that was around five years ago. But I recognize what you said, that the first time I actually got here, I was 18, which was three mm -hmm. years before I came to study here. And I also wasn't that keen on it. Like, I really, like... Does it grow on you? Yeah, it does. It does grow it on you, does. but it, it's a drug that wears itself out on its patient. Yeah. That as well. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else to it. You know, you've got the city. Mm. Um, Nightlife is great, of course. Alcohol nightlife is, is fantastic the food, here. The food is outstanding. Yes. <laughs> we got some stories on the nightlife in a bit. Yeah, yeah. they're coming up but soon, like folks. What <laughs> happened? What actually happens at a at a boat party <laughs> in Budapest? <laughs> in this Plus occasion. Party. <laughs> so, one more. Like, what were you gonna say? Well, what I wanted to say was, the city doesn't have an inner life. I mean, communism wiped out everything. There aren't even mm. decent bookshops. All mm. of the bars and cafes date from after 1990. So this, this city doesn't really seem to have any cultural institutions, apart from a few museums, but I mean, they're probably state-owned. So and what's the reason Africa's you keep coming back here? Uh, the, the people. The people. And the weather. <laughs> really? Yeah. When you say the people, are you talking about Arwen and co? Yeah, or? well, it's certainly not the Hungarians. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we live? What's going on? Like? <laughs> no, I, 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 I concur to what you were saying. I refer to what we were talking yeah. about earlier in the morning when we were talking about how quirky the clientele of Sweet Hostel yeah, that are. As well. By either by coincidence or whether it's, I think there's a lot of return clients for the island. I think when people yeah, show up here, definitely all the time. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. feel they they feel they can trust this place. Yeah. Guys, I, I think mean, it's more about the hostel in Arwen and the place he created rather than Budapest.